What did oh. Sam do next? Well, um, I just started to go down the classical route, really. Uh, Mum and Dad didn't like it. They wanted me to do something more contemporary, but I was being stubborn. Um, and I just went to the RNCM, went to Huddersfield University and then the RNCM. Mm. And it was hard because suddenly I had to do everything in a certain way. So it was all very classically um, enhanced what I was doing. Bearing in mind that the whole time I was there, I was working as a club singer at the weekends because I had to, to, to get myself, I had to be able to pay the bills. I bet that didn't um, go down well. <laughs> no, they did not like it. No. Yeah, not at all. And I understand why, because they were trying to make me sing in a certain way with a certain setup. And I was going and singing Tina Turner every weekend. And by this point, I'd got an agent that, you know, I used to do all the Northwest clubs um, in order to, every weekend, that was how I managed to stay at university, at college, the RNCM. Um, and it was hard because I was really multitasking with my voice. I had no idea how I was doing the contemporary sounds. Mm -hmm. you no, know? I, I, and gradually, the more I got trained in the classical, I found it harder to do the contemporary sounds and it didn't come as easily anymore. Mm. that was that was tough um so did that obviously got through the rncm um got into a relationship family and the relationship came first so i didn't chase the big career i did do a, quite a bit of singing but i didn't chase the big career um tended to sort of go more into the settling down with my my husband um and i think around then is when i started to teach singing so until that point i taught piano i taught keyboard and piano i used to have piano students, keyboard students. Um, and then I started to teach singing and it was such a very a strange experience because I hadn't been taught in any other way apart from classical. Mm. So when I was teaching contemporary, I was winging it. I was going with what I remembered and mm. how I'd made sounds, not what I'd been taught because it didn't feel like it fit. Mm -hmm. I was being taught, you know, classically. Um, so I carried on for a while having classical singing lessons myself. I never had any contemporary lessons for myself. It was all classical. And then about eight years ago, I had to look this up because I couldn't remember. There was so, there's so many dates. I started to get really into CPD, really into, uh, understanding more about singing and the voice. Cause I thought I, you know, enough's enough. I need to know how I'm doing these sounds. Mm -hmm. You know why it, I can't keep teaching my singing students these sounds that don't match the songs that they're singing because I knew instinctively they didn't match. So <laughs> yeah, the thumbs up from Gillian, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, they didn't sound right, and I very rarely used things that I I was learning in my own lessons, mm. which, which left a big gap. Yeah. You no. Know? Um. So I went down the, the the road of starting to learn about other types of coaching and other types of training. Um, I came across your book with one of my singing teachers who had gone and found a, a teacher in London. And he was actually a colleague, friend of mine. He was a peer that I'd been at the RNCM with. And he had suddenly started to sound incredible, classical tenor, but he suddenly started to sound incredible. And he offered to give me a few lessons mm -hmm. um, based on what he'd learned in London. And we, yeah, I went along to his lessons and felt incredibly different in what I was doing with him. And we got talking about how the voice worked and he got your book out and he said, get this book, Singing in the Actor. Mm -hmm. And so I got the book and then I started to go into looking into how I can find out more about the sort of stuff that was in the book. Yes. And that led me to Estelle. So yeah, absolutely understood. Yeah. yeah. So I did quite a lot of Estelle and obviously because it's the first time I'd experienced anything non-classical, it was a bit of a mind blown experience. Mm. And I know we've all been there, <laughs> you know, it's a bit of a, oh gosh, what well, this, this suddenly this makes sense as to what I do. So when I'm not singing classically or what I used mm. to do before I'd forgotten how to do it. And, um, so I, I spent, I really invested, I spent a good few years investing a lot of money and time and energy in that type of training mm. um and on me it worked but i do remember struggling a little bit to find ways to get it across to my students in the same way that it worked for me mm. so that was interesting and then i started to hear um other ideas 
on the grapevine i joined a few social media platforms and i start to hear other ideas out there and start to get interested in that and then i think came across a course with you guys and that was when i first met you and yeah did some courses with you and i've been doing them ever since so <laughs> that, that was about 2000 and was it 15, 17 it's only about five years ago I when I first started. Ah, yes, 2017. Oh, yeah. years, but... What was it through AOTOS or something that you came on something or? Yeah, I think I've done I've done things with you through AOTOS. I went on your big speech um, with the AOTOS thing as well. Right. Um, I've done I've done loads of them. I've done loads of little day courses or and I've done the retreats as yep. well. Yeah. Um, and it was really fascinating and frustrating at the same time because mm -hmm. the stuff mm -hmm. that I'd learned that I thought you guys were going to do, you didn't. <laughs> I remember you fighting. Yes, but you know what? I was what... so good at that stuff. You know, I'd embedded it really well. <laughs> yeah. And you'd really learned the concept. And I mean, I think you worked incredibly hard at it. Um, but also what's good is that you had the, the wisdom and insight really to notice it didn't always work with your students. Mm. And it's possible that it resonated extremely well with you because of the background you'd had mm. and that you could kind of quickly map your own voice on those ideas. Yeah. Um, but those templates don't work for everybody. Um, and that's kind of, that was part of our journey too. Mm, it was. So um, anyway, you managed to stay with us and kind of gently fight us. <laughs> I did. I gave yes. you a hard time. I did. And and I just want, well, you know, I was just like, well, why does it say this here? And then you're not, you're not doing this anymore. And uh, yeah, um, Katie said it beautifully, didn't she? If it's if it's good enough for Gillian, then it's good enough for me. And it took me ages to get my head around that because I, you know, I read the book, bought the T-shirt, believed in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and spent a fortune as well, you know, learning all this stuff and found it I'd quite embedded it really well and it, it was really hard to let go of some of those ideas mm. um, it, i think it is when you have committed yourself as much as you did mm. i think it is because you yeah. are firmly embedded in it and you are a 150 percent commitment person absolutely aren't you? I, th I think that I also think it takes courage. I mean, I have to say that for myself as well. Mm. It takes courage and honesty to look at something that maybe you were involved with in the past and felt very passionate about and look at it and go, hmm, I actually need to reframe some of this. I need to review some of this. Mm. And that's how we tend to see it. And, you know, we're all on a learning journey. Mm. Mm and um there are more things that we will be reframing as a result of what we learn when we go off to conferences and you have to sort of be prepared you know to ask yourself the question well what if that is wrong yeah if yeah. you do the what if question yeah, yeah it doesn't mean i'm a bad teacher because no. i've been teaching in good faith to the very best that i can yes it's it's a it's a challenging journey i think for any of us and well done you because yeah. you know you've you basically you took on the challenge 